He seems pretty unassuming. Just a dude in a thick coat walking to, uh, well, wherever it is that dudes in thick coats walk to. However, this man is the single most dangerous person in the entire Hunter Hunter world. More evil than Saridnik, more driven than Netero, and potentially even more powerful than Meruem. This man's name is Gyro and he is going to destroy the world. Meanwhile, my name is Liam and I'm, I'm not going to do that because I quite like the world. Although to be fair, if I'd had Gyro's upbringing, then I can't guarantee what I'd do. Gyro is a confusing character in the Hunt Hunt fandom, mostly because depending on whether you've watched the anime or read the manga, those are two completely different experiences of him. If you watch the anime, then quite honestly, Gyro could be a very forgettable character. His name gets mentioned a bunch, like quite a few times actually, but by the time we even really realize he exists, he's been killed and fed to the Ant Queen. So he kind of fizzles out and his whole existence feels like a story that was never quite completed. Whereas in the manga, not only is that story complete, but it also completely changes the way that you will see Gyro and even Gon. Gyro and Gon are characters who are intrinsically linked. And not just because of all of the nice fluffy narrative parallels that we can make between them, but because the narrator of the series quite literally said so. And if there is any good reason to bring Gon back into the story, this, this is it. Because these two have unfinished business. And the sheer amount of information that was left out of the TV series is going to shock anime watchers. Also, this video is sponsored by Manscaped, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene. Now I legitimately use Manscaped on a a daily basis because like, I'm a pretty hairy dude, man, and I need something to keep my gear in order. So Manscaped hooked me up with the Performance Package 4.0 so that my package will also be able to perform. First up is the Lawn Mower 4.0 Body Trimmer, which is waterproof with advanced skin safe technology. Safety being a pretty paramount concern when you take sharp things and put them on your dick. Also included in this package is the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. And rather appropriately, just like balls, they come in a pair. Plus there's the Weed Whacker to deal with that pesky nose and ear hair. And for a limited time, you can get all of this plus two free gifts, which are the cleverly named Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Because it's not good enough to simply do the weeding, you've also got to protect and maintain. Like a, uh, like a very sweaty vegetable garden. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use my promo code NEWWORLD at checkout. But for now, it's back to you, me. But before that, how does one go about becoming the most evil entity in all of Hunter Hunter? Well, Gyro has a pretty painfully detailed backstory, which all begins in a harsh construction camp. As a young lad, age of, well, young, Gyro was said to have been able to mix cement and lay bricks before he could even speak a single word. Although even once he did learn, I imagine that Gyro probably didn't say too much. Because his father was a wildly abusive man who would viciously beat Gyro for simply breathing too loudly, provided he was sober enough to enact it, of course. And there's even one particularly tragic example of how Gyro had to learn how to sleep without making noise so as not to activate his father's rage. And typically it's quite difficult to control what your body is doing while it's asleep. So to say that Gyro was born into unfortunate circumstances would be a bit of an understatement. When it comes to Gyro's father, the specific word used is God. This man was a God to Gyro, not in any sort of benevolent worshipy sense, but more in the fear, wrath of God sort of sense. Now, despite that, there was one teeny tiny shred of hope that kept Gyro going. One instant he recalled where, as a child, he was struck with a fever and his father stayed up all night taking care of him. The one act of kindness that his father had ever shown him. However, that was just Gyro's fever playing tricks on his mind brain. In reality, it was his neighbor taking care of him whilst his father was out getting completely hammered. That is a clever but gruesome pun, by the way, and then you'll see why soon. The very last straw was when Gyro was being beaten in public, you know, just your standard everyday occurrence. And on that day, his father saw him and walked right past him. He saw Gyro, he clocked that it was his son, and he simply didn't care. Now the exact quote in the manga is, at that moment, everything became clear to him. The universe could care less about his existence. His father didn't care whether he lived or died. If he lived, he'd bring in money. If he died, then he'd have the room to himself. That's all. I was not a person. I was nobody at all. This here is the moment in Viro's Viro. This here is the moment in Gyro's supervillain origin story where he cast aside his humanity, mostly due to the realization that he had never been treated like a human anyway. It's all very existential, almost cosmic horror-esque, with Gyro realizing just how small and insignificant he is in the grand scheme of the universe. But with that realization came a second, and this would go on to define Gyro. His father, 
was no god. This alcoholic bungle nut was every bit as much of an oxygen thief as Gyro was. So Gyro immediately went home and mercilessly murdered his father by beating him to death with a hammer. Which is of course the gruesome pun I was referring to because Gyro's father spent all of his time getting hammered anyway, so this, this is nothing new. But Gyro promptly fled the camp, vanished for nine years, and then emerged to start the nation of NGL, where he was installed as a king. But notably, this is of course the site of the original Chimera Ant outbreak. We'll get to that soon though, because I don't wanna skip over this whole nation building thing because that's pretty huge. And Gyro's flashback doesn't even come close to covering his insane talents. In the manga, it is said that Gyro was in no hurry. He knew preparations were necessary for major undertakings. His experience in construction made him rational and productive. So the fact that he understood the logistics of construction before he even knew how to say the word construction has bred this unparalleled planning genius. Within the Hunter Hunter fan base, Gyro is often credited, as I've said, one of the most evil driven and powersome figures. But what he almost never gets credit for is that he's also one of the smartest, which adds this whole new tier to our sinister problem cake. Gyro's goal in founding this kingdom was, quite blatantly, to disseminate evil throughout the whole world. And he did this by using the nation to develop a certain drug known as Didi, although its exact effects remain quite vague. Mostly because NGL had a little bit of a chimera ant outbreak and they slaughtered everyone, including Gyro, before this plan could come to fruition. Which you know what, that, that's good news, right? Quite literally, the most evil character in the series is dead and we never have to worry about him again, hooray. Well, no, not hooray, because this actually made matters significantly worse. The scary thing about Gyro is that he is identified as the most driven character in the series, not by fans, but by the narrator. And when a series has a power system that directly responds to drive and desire, then if one Gyro was to learn about said power system, he would naturally become the most powerful Nen user potentially to have ever lived. So if he was to be eaten by a certain queen and reborn as some sort of anti-Nen user, then that that would be a problem. Sadly, that's what happened. But this takes us to the anime interpretation of events. Gyro was introduced as the king of NGL, but he was already dead by the time he was introduced. And in my opinion, the anime makes an attempt to strongly suggest that Gyro, after being consumed by the Ant Queen, was reborn as the Ant King Meruem. And I absolutely do not blame any anime watchers who landed on this conclusion, because the way the 2011 series presents it makes a ton of sense. Like I just said, if someone as driven as Gyro were to learn Nen, then he would naturally become the most powerful or user in all of the histories in such a short degree of time, which is exactly what Meruem did. In only 40 days of existence, he eclipsed all known Nen users and became the closest thing we've seen to a literal god in Hunter x Hunter. All knowing, all powerful, but with one weakness to a certain Gungi champion. Plus what we know of Gyro is that he is so persistent in his belief that he is a king just like Meruem. So it matches up almost, almost too perfectly. And it would actually be a really great way to bring the Chimera Antark full circle. However, then right at the last second, the anime throws a pretty serious curveball. Towards the end of the series, we are given a glimpse of a man in a thick coat, walking to wherever it is that men in thick coats walk to, and there is no clue as to who or what he's doing. But this, this is a reference to all of the information that was left out of the anime. In the manga, Gyro was introduced in a completely different place. Oh, and actually, fun fact, the chapter he was introduced in being 203, appropriately called Gyro, featured Leorio and Karapika as the cover spread saying, when's our turn? And the answer to that would be, well, not for a long, long time. That chapter actually came out in 2004 and those two would not be relevant again for another seven years. But back to evil business. Gyro actually comes dangerously close to meeting with Gon and Killua in the manga, as all three of them happen to be in the same city, whilst Gon and Killua are facing off against Knuckle and Shoot. And in the manga, Gyro's flashback occurs here, whereas in the anime, it had already happened ages ago, when Gon and Killua and Kite raided the drug factory. And as Gyro is walking intently through the city, the narrator Rita says this. Out of the countless soldier ants born, one had an independent will, adamantly rejecting the queen's commands. His name was Gyro, the NGL kingpin. His malevolence and determination were second to none. And he was in the same town as Gon and Killua. So Gyro is the only ant, aside from the king and the royal guard, who was able to ignore the queen. He just like popped out, went, see ya. Because in his immense pride, he still considered himself to be a king. Plus in Gyro's brand new anti eyes, everyone and everything was equally as irrelevant in the grand scheme of the universe. Remember, he once thought of his father as a god. And after killing a god, what is there to fear from a mere ant queen? Now, thanks to either fate or circumstance or both, Gon and Gyro did not run into each other on that particular day. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that's very much left up in the air because the narrator then utters 
probably the single most intriguing line in all of Hunter x Hunter. Gyro left the town and disappeared without encountering Gon. Whether this proved to be fortunate for either party will not be known until they ultimately meet. Now that that's wow, because it is so incredibly rare that Togashi does something like this. He's generally a bit of an improvised writer going arc by arc and not one to set up meta stories in the background. But on this occasion, we have confirmation that Gon and Gyro will meet at some point in the series continuity. And given that Gyro is the worst case scenario for all aspects of a pun intended antagonist, it seems that Gyro is the true end game of Hunter x Hunter, even beyond the dark continent. Because sure, we can go there and experience the vast horrors of the outside world, but it is still not going to match what this one man is capable of. And actually I should stop referring to him as a man because mentally Gyro cast away his humanity as a child. And after physically being reborn as a chimera ant, there is nothing human left about Gyro. Nor is he an ant, mind you, he's something else entirely, just this unique and twisted existence. After the conclusion of the chimera ant arc, Welfin posited that Gyro was almost certainly headed for Meteor City in order to commence his plans once more. And Welfin was determined to find his old leader, not to stop him, but because Welfin has faith in Gyro, as do all of his former henchmen like Ikalga, for example. They all believe that Gyro is some sort of savior, and it's it's a very, it's a very weird dynamic because Welfin and Decalgo are at heart you know, pretty good dudes, very sympathetic characters, which says to me that Gyro has been able to shroud his true nature from them. And this is a scary thought because Welfin is now a Nen user. So even if Gyro doesn't awaken the art form on his own, the very first thing that Welfin is going to do is teach him how to harness aura. And Meteor City could not be a better location. For Gyro that is, it could not be a worse location for everyone else. And Gyro himself doesn't realize just how perfect this is. Because right now Meteor City is completely unprotected. Because the Meteor City Elder is dead and the Phantom Troop are all headed to the Dark Continent. So there is no one to stop Gyro from having his way with this city. And a much more bigger issue is that the bulk of the Hunter Association are also on the Dark Continent mission. So there is no one to step in and quell this threat before it gets out of hand. Like the extermination team were barely able to do with the Chimera Ants. No one except Gone. Allegedly. Gon and Gyro are inverse characters, which means what is true for one is false of the other. For example, Gon grew up in a lake of happiness, whereas Gyro grew up in a puddle of misery. But Gyro's father was present in his life, whereas Gon's father abandoned him. However, Gon's journey then began to find his father, whereas Gyro's journey began to get rid of his father, quite, quite violently. And whilst we simply don't know enough about Gyro to build deeper insight, it would certainly appear that Togashi was setting him up to be an ultimate antithesis of Gon, particularly because Gon also had his snap moment where he felt that nothing mattered. Everything was pointless and he was ready to throw it all away. But Gon came back from that. I mean, not because of anything that he did, but because of his best friend and best boy Killua. However, if there's anyone in this world who can identify with the darkness consuming Gyro and the descent from humanity into a general monsterhood, then it is definitely Gon. And this is a situation where the narrator saying that they will meet doesn't necessarily mean that they'll fight. Gon, still unable to use Nen, might actually be able to save the world without using a single drop of aura. But fortunately or unfortunately, he's the only chance we have. The great powers of this series have almost universally abandoned the human realm in pursuit of the Dark Continent. They don't realize it, but they've left the remainder of humanity completely defenseless against the greatest threat that this world has ever faced. And it's entirely possible that if anyone does return from the Dark Continent, that there will be nothing left to return to.